Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Donovan and Bernadette Jones, together with their family, have made it their mission to provide a stable and loving home to mothers and children who are at risk due to abuse and neglect through their NPO, The Jones Safe House. Now, Donovan, ha as well as Eliswa, are in the loft to tell us about this amazing initiative. But first, let's have a little look at their home. <laughs> For the past 15 years, the Jones Safe House, situated near Komaki, has been a safe haven to many abused and abandoned underprivileged children, as well as mothers suffering addiction and abuse. The founders, Donovan and Bernie Jones, together with their family, provide a stable, loving home where healing can begin, and these at-risk children and their mothers can grow and flourish, and if at all possible, be safely reintegrated into their families and society. Wow, welcome to the show, Zalisa and Donovan. Thank you. Thank you. you know, I remember when Ryan Reynolds was in Cape Town, it was to shoot the story, The Safe House. And so I think it gave people quite a skewed opinion on what exactly a safe house is. So why don't you explain to us, what is your safe house and why did you start it? The, the safe house is a place that we accept children that, that ends up in trouble. So abandoned, abused, means physical, mentally, all types of abuse, children that we, we, we take into our home and we give them a life, a normal environment to live in. Um, some, some of the children, comes, they come through the home and then they move on back to family members and some stays there for always, you know. Uh, um, it is what it is. And um, well, me and Bernadette dedicated our lives to do this and there's no way that we're going to stop. Um, doing what we're doing. Yeah, you, were you about to be retired and then opened up the, the safe house? Not, How did it happen? Not really. Um, the, the home started when it was a book that I did many years ago mm. for a priest. And um, I ended up with my family and Bernadette's family um, assisting the priest until he passed away. We ended up living in this particular house and my wife started, decided one day to, to, to help children. And I was dragged into it and uh, very pleased with it. And um, it took off from there. Yeah. And um, now we've now committed ourselves and we're doing it. You yeah, know? can't back, look, can't back you, out now. How, how can you say to a child now, 15 years or 10 years later, I'm not, I'm not going to be your dad or mom anymore. Yeah. I'm going to retire now. You, you can't retire. No, not at there, all. There's no ways uh, that, that you can tell a child that, that you reared from six months or four months old, yeah. you know, that you, you want to retire now. You don't want to. Yeah, don't. you can't give something like that up. No. So, Lisa, you live at the house. How is yeah. it that you ended up staying there? Okay, so I was abused by my mom and her husband. So, like, between the, the ages of 11 and 13. So um, when I was 13, my aunt came to live with us from Durban. She moved to live with us. And then she saw the way my mom was being abusive to me. And then there was a point in, at one point, she actually witnessed my mom being physically abusive to me. And yeah. like she was yelling and she was just in a rage. Yeah. So then my aunt just took her away from me and like put her in, in, a, in, a, in a other room and she spoke to her and no matter how many times she spoke to my mom, she just wouldn't listen. Yeah. So then my aunt decided she's gonna go to the police station and, repo and report this. Yeah. So then one day I get called into the deputy principal's office and um, I remember being so nervous because I didn't know, I didn't know what, was, what, what, what was gonna happen next. So then um, there were two detectives and a woman that came afterwards and um, they said that your aunt came to us and reported that your mother was being abusive to you. Mm. Will you tell us um, what's been happening at home? And I remember just before I told them, I just broke down and cried. Yeah. And then I told them everything that you happened. You must have been so scared. I was terrified. And like, do you, you obviously don't keep any contact now with, with your, with your no. mom or boyfriend. It's not worth it. You do know that nothing was your fault. And, and it's so, it must be such a relief for you to be in a much safer space now. Yeah, that's what they had to drum into my head over time because 
I, I always took it upon myself that everything was everything I did was my fault because yeah, nothing not. I did was good enough no. for them. So. And you know, stuff like that has got nothing to do with you. Yeah. It's it's so sad that you had to be part of it, but it's got nothing to do with you. And I'm so sorry that you had to endure that. But what if you what is your life like now? Um, my life changed like 360 degrees Amazing. when I <laughs> when I um, started living there. Like I I remember like during, during my first days there. I had to like keep reminding myself, yeah. this is real. This is my new life. Yeah, I am safe. So then, um, like one of the first things Andrew Bernie said to me was, "Be a child." Yeah. And then, one of the first things Uncle Donovan said to me was, "You are now a part of my family." Yeah. And that amount of acceptance meant really meant a lot to me. Yeah. That is great. Yeah. Are you, like, being in a, a safe house, obviously it's under a lot of protection, but why have you decided to speak about it on TV, aren't you? Because obviously, you, you know, I think you, you're quite anonymous in a, in a safe house. But you've been brave enough to come and speak on TV. Thank you. We're <laughs> very happy you did that. <laughs> yeah? Oh, <laughs> Okay, so what does, I mean, running costs every month must be quite That's intense. Very high. What do you need? And how do you, how are you able to sustain it? Uh, to to <clears throat> to run the home, our home we see it as a normal home. Yeah. Like anybody else's home, it's the same. It's not an institution. Yeah. We see it as I'm I'm the dad, my wife is the mom, and we run a normal home. My children go to school. Yeah. Um, they do everything that other children are doing. And do they, children come in and out, or is it essentially you adopting all of these children? You know, children do come. We get emergencies yeah. at any, any hour. It can happen, and it happens regularly where mm -hmm. there's an emergency. Our doors are open. Yeah. doesn't matter if it's ten children, if it's five or one child, or if it's a baby, or if it's a, a teenager. We are yeah. there. It's open. The doors are open. You can ring out. Our bell at any time, the doors will open for you. If there's yeah. a child in need, the Joneses are there. We've always been since we started. But to, 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 it's very expensive to run the yeah. home. You can just imagine, you know, uh, um, we do need help from, from people out there that can mm. help. Who it, does assist, government or the community? The, we, we get a small portion, like a, a small grant for six of our children from yeah. government. We've currently got 15 children, and um, I, I, I do contribute physically. My yeah. whatever I earn goes towards the home. Yeah. Um, it's not easy. Yeah. Financially, it's not easy. There's always that worry fr from my side: mm. Is there enough food? Is there enough for the children? Yeah. Especially when the needs come, do, do they have shoes? Will I be able to buy it now? There's an emergency, I need to buy a pair of shoes now. Things like that, exactly. you know? So we do need help from, from the community, sure. from our people, to assist me and Bernie to do the, this wonderful work that we're doing. Yeah. Um, we are making a difference. You are. And we would like to keep continue doing so. I think it is so extraordinary. Like, you've basically dedicated your life to service to these beautiful children and to this family, and it's amazing. Thank you for the work you do. What is your wish for your life, and where do you see your future going? Um, I want to study fine art. So beautiful. that's one, that's like the main thing I'm focused on now. Yeah. Uh, Are you painting, or what is your, your favourite medium? Uh, drawing and painting. Beautiful. Yeah. We'd love to see some of your work. <laughs> OK, I'll show you. Thank you there. so much for being here and sharing your stories with Thank us. Thank you very much for having us. And best of luck with, with Thank the beautiful you very house. much.